In next week's lab, you'll be given several unknown genetic systems and asked to elucidate several properties of those systems. Your first task will be to determine the dominance properties of the system, that is, which alleles are dominant and which are recessive. Although you will be working virtually, you can compare this exercise to a hypothetical real-life situation in which you discover a new species of plant with red and white flowers. Physically, only the phenotypes of the plants are apparent. Because you cannot see the genotype of each plant, this means that there are two alternate genetic scenarios. In one scenario, the red allele is dominant and the white recessive. And in the second scenario, the red allele is recessive and the white dominant. So under these scenarios, any one red flower or any one white flower could be a heterozygote, a homozygous dominant, or a homozygous recessive. To distinguish between these two scenarios, we can perform trial crosses by mating any two individuals. This is what you will be doing virtually. To perform trial crosses, there are really only two general paths to take. You could cross individuals with the same phenotype or individuals with different phenotypes. We will go through these two types of crosses systematically. The goals of this video are one, to help you understand and interpret the results of trial crosses. Two, to demonstrate that some trial crosses produce ambiguous results while others produce informative results and to help you distinguish between these two types of crosses. And three, to help you learn to recognize these types of crosses as you perform the lab exercise. Let's start with a cross of individuals with the same phenotype. In this case, plants with red flowers. In the scenario that the red allele is recessive, the only possible genotype for both plants is homozygous recessive. However, in the scenario that the red allele is dominant, there are three possibilities. Both plants can be homozygous dominant, one plant can be homozygous dominant and the other heterozygous, or both plants can be heterozygous. Now we'll perform these crosses and determine which of these crosses provides the most useful information and can allow us to make a conclusion about whether the red allele is dominant or recessive. In the scenario that the red allele is recessive, crossing two red flowered plants would produce offspring that are all red flowered. In the scenario that the red allele is dominant, First, we begin with a cross of two homozygous dominant plants. And we see here that this cross would again produce offspring that are all red flowered. Next is a cross of a homozygous dominant plant and a heterozygous plant. Once again, all offspring from this cross are red flowered. Notice that like the scenario in which the red allele is recessive, all offspring from this cross as well as the previous cross of two homozygous dominant plants are red flowered. This is an important point that we will get back to in a short while. Finally, in the scenario that the red allele is dominant, a cross of two heterozygous plants would result in three-fourths of the offspring being red flowered and one-fourth being white flowered. Now when we summarize the results of our crosses in table form here, you can immediately see that trial crosses in which the parents and offspring all have the same phenotype are ambiguous crosses. In other words, all three trial crosses shown here have the same result, that is of all red offspring. However, this result can be attributed to both of the genetic scenarios being tested. Therefore, these trial crosses do not reveal information about the dominance relationship between the alleles. On the other hand, the trial crosses in which some of the offsprings do not have the fe same phenotype as the parents are informative crosses. The result of the informative cross shown here can be attributed to only one genetic scenario, 
the scenario in which the red allele is dominant. Now we can move on to the second type of trial cross, one in which the parents are of two different phenotypes. In this case, regardless of the scenario being tested, there are two possibilities for the parents' genotypes. One of the parents must be homozygous recessive, while the other parent could be homozygous dominant or heterozygous. Let us perform the crosses to test the scenario that the red allele is recessive. In the first cross of a heterozygous plant with a homozygous recessive plant, half of the offspring are red flowered and the other half are white flowered. In the second cross of a homozygous dominant plant with a homozygous recessive plant, all of the offspring are white flowered. Now pause the video and draw out the Punnett squares for these crosses under the assumption that the red allele is dominant. We can summarize the results of our crosses again in table form. Trial crosses of two phenotypically different parents that result in offspring with both phenotypes are ambiguous crosses. Again, this is because this outcome can be derived from both of the genetic scenarios being tested. However, these trial crosses, although ambiguous, provide some useful information about the genotypes of the parents and offspring. Even though we don't know which allele is dominant and which is recessive, we do know that half the offspring are heterozygous and the other half are homozygous recessive. Think about ways in which you could take advantage of this information as you work through your exercises in lab. On the other hand, trial crosses of the two phenotypically different parents that result in offspring with only one of the parent's phenotype are informative crosses. Again, this is because the outcomes of these crosses can be attributed to only one genetic scenario. For example, in the cross, the trial cross of a red flowered and white flowered plant, we would obtain offspring that are all white flowered only if the white allele were dominant. Continue with the video to test your newfound understanding of how to identify informative trial crosses.